Hi everybody and welcome to a new video in the Deep Learning Audio application from Design to Deployment series. Last time we built our keyboard spotting service, which was basically like a wrapper class around our TensorFlow model with the speech recognition system. And so this time we're gonna take that uh, keyword spotting service and deploy it in a Flask uh, application. So for doing that, we're gonna build a couple of things. So a Flask server and a client. So let's get started by adding a couple of files here in my uh, project. So one is gonna be called server and uh, the other one, not surprisingly, is gonna be called a uh, client. Good. Okay, so we'll start from the server, but before getting into this, I want to uh, give you like an idea of how this thing is gonna work. So we're gonna have this Flask server uh, running and uh, listening on a local host to port uh, 5000. And then what we want to do is basically from the client, uh, placing an HTTP uh, POST uh, request, and this POST request is going to hit the server. The server uh, is going to uh, read like this request and extract the uh, audio file that will bundle with the POST request. And then it's going to uh, predict the keyword in the audio file through the keyword spotting server, uh, service. And then it's going to send back a uh, prediction. Prediction back to client. So this basically is the whole thing that we're going to be building. So let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do here is to install the uh, Flask uh, web um, framework. So for doing that, we can do a simple pip install Flask. So I'm not going to do this because I already have it installed, but you should do it. Uh, and then what we want to do is import some stuff from uh, the Flask package. So initially, uh, we are going to import Flask. Okay, so now you may be wondering, but what's Flask? Well, Flask is a, a web uh, framework. It's kind of like a very thin web framework, and it's very flexible, and you can do, you can build uh, things that are, or web applications that are very complex with this. And what I'm going to be covering today is just really like the tip of the iceberg here. But if you want to learn more about Flask, I suggest you uh, take a uh, look at the Flask documentation. So here's the website. And uh, don't worry because I've posted the uh, link to this website in the description below in case like you want to dig in. Uh, to you like the the flask um, uh, library good okay so let's get back here so the first thing that we want to do here is to create a uh, flask uh, application so and for doing that we should do app equal uh, flask and we'll pass in a name good so now we have this uh, flask application the next thing that we want to do is basically to route the incoming uh, request to a an api endpoint so let me explain how this works and how like flask handles things so basically what flask does an, an application gets like a uh, certain like requests, HTTP requests, like GET requests or POST requests. And then uh, depending on the URL, it just like routes the incoming request to uh, different uh, like views. And these views are going to be responsible for uh, serving uh, material back based on the different URLs that we are hitting. So uh, what we want to do here is basically create, uh, so use a uh, decorator that comes uh, with Flask. And so this works like this. So it's up dot uh, route. And here we should pass in the um, the route that in this case is going to be predict. And then uh, we'll pass in the methods that um, uh, this route is going to be is going to accept. And obviously we want to use a post. Uh, a POST uh, request here. 
Okay, so and then we should build uh, the view. Uh, that's a, a simple uh, function that's going to handle all the incoming um, requests that will hit the uh, predict uh, uh, pred predict route. So basically, okay. So let me try to explain what's happening here. Because it could be like a little bit confusing if, if you don't know Flask. So what we said like with this is that whenever like we send a, um, a request to say, for example, we have like our domain, our domain name, like for this application is ks.com, for example. And then we hit uh, ks.com predict. So what Flask does, it gets like this request and it routes it back to this view down here that's uh, that's connected with this like predict uh, thing, right? And so now in this <clears throat> predict uh, function here, which in Flask terms is called a view, we need to uh, get the audio file that's bundled with the post request. And then we want to instantiate the keyboard spotting service, so our TensorFlow model. And then we want to make the prediction and send back the prediction to the client. Okay, so now let's write down like all of these different steps that we want to uh, perform. So the first one is get audio file and save it. Then we'll uh, do another thing. Uh, which is to uh, invoke uh, the keyword spotting uh, service. So this is our TensorFlow model, a speech recognition model. And then we want to make a prediction so that we can spot which keyword uh, is contained in the audio file. Then we are uh, going to remove the uh, audio file that we've temporarily stored uh, like in, in our current uh, directory. And finally, uh, we want to send back the uh, predicted keyword in JSON format. Good. Okay, so let's get started from the, yeah, the first task. So we want to get this audio file and uh, save it. So for doing that, the first thing is we are going to need this variable that comes with Flask that's called request, which holds all of our like incoming requests. And so we'll say that our audio file is equal to a request then dot uh, files and here this is going to be like a dictionary and we want to look into the the file keyword and so this will give uh, this will give us access to the audio file that we've sent then the next thing that we want to uh, do is save this file and so we need a, uh, a file name uh, before so we can save it. And so the file name here, for the file name, I want to use just like a random number. So I'm gonna import the a random uh, module here, and then we'll do a string, and then a random dot a rand int, and I want a random, a random number between zero and let's say, a hundred thousand. Good. And then I'm going to cast that into a string. And then we can now save this file. So we'll do audio file dot save and we'll pass in the file name. And the file is going to be stored in our uh, working directory. So basically inside here. Good. Okay. So now we want to invoke the keyword spotting service. And so for doing that, we actually need the keyword spotting service. So we'll do a from keyword uh, spotting service imports keyword spotting service. Good, service, good. Okay, so here we'll do a KSS. I'm just going to use a uh, condensed version, like an acronym for that. So KSS is equal to uh, keyword spotting service. So we'll, we'll call this 
um, constructor here for keyboard spotting service. Now, this is where our TensorFlow uh, model uh, that uh, kind of like works as our like speech recognition system is uh, hold. Now, if you don't remember, uh, if you don't remember like the keyword spotting service, you should go back to my previous video and check that out because they're like, a, I basically built like the whole class. But the thing that you need to know now, even if you don't know anything else about this class is that this is a single term class, which basically means it, it's gonna be uh, called only uh, uh, once. So we're gonna basically only have one instance of this class running in our Flask server. So in other words, when we are hitting the uh, predict uh, view over here, the first time we're gonna instantiate uh, the keyword spotting service, but if we hit it again, we're not gonna reinstantiate uh, it here, but we're just gonna get that initial instance. So why do we do that? Well, we do this because this way we are gonna save a lot of computation and the whole process is gonna be way faster. Good, so now you know why we're using like keyword spotting service as a singleton class, uh, design pattern. Good, okay, so now we have this KSS. The next thing that we wanna do is just uh, do a prediction. And for doing that, we do kss.predict and uh, we pass in the file name. Good, and this will uh, give us back a predicted, predicted keyword. Okay, so now we have our predicted keyword. So this is a string uh, that could be like on, off, down, any of the, the keywords that we trained our keyword spotting system uh, on. Good. Uh, okay, but uh, yeah, let me just like bring this like this. Okay, so now we've made this uh, prediction. Now that we've made the prediction, we don't need to store this uh, audio file uh, anymore, so we can remove it. And for doing that, we need to import the OS uh, module. And so here we'll do a OS dot uh, remove and we'll pass in the file name and this is gonna get rid of our uh, audio file, good. Okay, so now we need to send back the predicted um, keyword in JSON format. Okay, so let me just like create a few new lines here. And so the first thing that we wanna do is create a data dictionary where we'll have only one key here and we'll call it keyword and the value associated to this key, you'll guess it, is gonna be predicted keyword. Good, okay. So now we can return uh, data, but we don't want to return this, but we want to return a JSON file and so we'll are gonna use this JSONify uh, function, uh, but uh, JSONify mm -hmm. needs to be like imported and it's a function that comes with Flask, which basically converts some uh, like uh, Python data like into like a JSON uh, file. Good, okay, so this is like all we need uh, really like for our Flask uh, API. So let me just like get rid of that thing. Okay, so let's uh, use like this Flask server now. So we'll do if name is equal uh, to main as we usually do, then we want to do app dot uh, run and we'll run in not in debug mode. So we'll set the debug flag to false. Good, okay, so this is like the whole uh, Flask server. And so let's uh, run and see if it works. Okay, so I'm running it and here we go, good. So now the Flask server is running and it's uh, listening on localhost. Oh yeah, I didn't want to do that, sorry. Close tabs, good. Okay, so it's running uh, here. So it's on localhost, uh, listening on port uh, 5000. Good, 
So this is like all we needed for our uh, flat server. Now let's move on to the client side. Okay, so here, the first thing that we want to um, set is uh, the URL we want to hit. So this is the uh, API endpoint. And so as we've just seen, so this is HTTP and then we should pass in 127.0.0.1, so localhost and at port uh, 5000. And then the API endpoint is uh, predict. So we're going to send a post request to this uh, URL, which is going to be routed to this view, like in uh, the Flask uh, um, application. Good. Okay. So now let's do if name is equal to main. Let's do this. Okay. And here we're going to do a bunch of things, but before that, let's take the uh, test audio file path. Okay. So this is the path to the test audio file. And so I'm going to send over this file over here. So left.wave in the test uh, folder. And so I can just do test slash left.wave. That's great. So this is the audio file that we'll send over for getting a prediction on. Okay, so first of all, we want to get the uh, audio uh, file. So we need to open the audio file. And so we'll pass in this test audio file path and we'll open it in a reading mode, but uh, we'll read like a, a binary file basically. Uh, good. So then we want to set uh, a few values that we're going to send with our uh, post request. So uh, this is going to be set to, so we're going to have a key that we'll call uh, file. And then here we need to pass a bunch of things. So we'll pass the test audio file path first, then we'll pass in the audio file itself. Oops, sorry. I made a mistake, guys. So this is not uh, curly brackets. It's just like this uh, parenthesis here because it's a tuple. We want to send a tuple here. So this is going to be test audio file path. Then we'll pass in audio file. And then we should uh, specify um, which type of file we are sending over. So we'll say this is a, an audio file in wave uh, format, which is great. Okay, so now the next thing that we want to do is like to place the post uh, request and get a response back. But for doing that, uh, there's a very, very nice uh, library that will help us and it's called requests. Okay. So we'll say that response is equal to requests.post. And here we should pass the uh, URL and we'll pass in a, uh, an optional argument files and we'll set this equal to uh, values. Good. So with what this uh, instruction here does, it's basically like it sends a post request to the API endpoint, so to this URL, and it bundles up the uh, values. Uh, so, and it sends over the audio file. Good. And we're going to get back a response, hopefully, like if everything works correctly. Good. So. Now we need to extract the data from this uh, response that uh, we know from like Flask, it has been bundled as a JSON file. So we do a response.json uh, to get a dictionary uh, out of the response. And now we can print the results. And so we could say something like uh, predicted keyword is and we'll pass in data, uh, not this, uh, data, and we'll say uh, keyword. Okay, 
Good. Okay, so this is our client. So if everything uh, works correctly now, so we should be able to uh, send uh, like this post request and then uh, get back a prediction. So the way you do this is like, first of all, like you launch your uh, server um, scripts. Okay, so let me just like terminate this because we have a bunch of error uh, like down here. So I'm gonna uh, rerun this. Okay, so this is our um, a Flask server running and then I'm gonna uh, open another uh, terminal here and I'm in the uh, root folder of our uh, project and so here I have the client.py file and so I can uh, start it and so let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so it seems to be working and here we go. So predicted keyword is left correct okay so you may have noticed that uh like w once we started once we uh run like the post request uh, so like the server uh started to load like the tensorflow model which is like the thing that i was saying before so if we've never uh, like uh, run this keyword spotting service constructor uh, earlier. So like the first time we're gonna run that so that we can instantiate that. And so that keyword spotting service is gonna in also like load the TensorFlow model. But now that the model has been loaded and it's a singleton, if we rerun this, uh, you'll see that it's super fast to get a response. And that's because we are not uh, loading the TensorFlow model again, because we already have a, an instance of the keyword spotting service class, which is great. Good. Okay, so now we've been, I, I think like you guys like should congratulate yourselves because now you know how to deploy a TensorFlow model on a Flask application, which is, yeah, quite something. Most people out there don't know how to do this. Good, but this is not over yet because unfortunately we can't just use the Flask uh, development server uh, for production. So I want to like uh, get your attention on one thing here. So the guys at Flask, uh, when you run like the uh, Flask application with the Flask development server, uh, actually like output this warning. So they say, this is a development server, do not use it in a production deployment, right? <clears throat> this is because like Flask comes obviously with a, a an HTTP uh, server, but I mean, it's not a production server. So we need to change the server that we use uh, so that it it's something like that can be used like in production properly. So this is why in the next video, we're gonna implement or we're gonna set up a UWSGI uh, server and we're gonna use that in combination with our Flask application. So stay tuned for that so for in the next video. So I hope you, find, you found this video uh, interesting and if that's the case, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell and as always, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, post them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time. Cheers.